So uh, I'm experiencing a bit of a cold at the moment. So my voice is a bit funny and the brain is slowly working. But uh, so we started this project because uh, there was a, a bit of talk on synthetic data and we uh, realized that there might be a use case for synthetic data, uh, but all the synthetic data, almost all we had access to were not uh, reflecting uh, demographics of the Australian population. Uh, so we, we started this uh, project to uh, solve that problem. So as many uh, projects in, in research, it's a collaborative project where uh, different people have contributed either by physically working on it or by giving some ideas. Um, we all know that access to data is essential for, for research um, and access to real world data is quite challenging, especially for medical data. And the process can be, can be quite long. Uh, uh, synthetic data are generated to uh, represent real data um, this meaning that they have the same statistical properties uh, in terms of distributions and in terms of having the ability of reproducing some models uh, that were done from the from the real data. Um, synthetic data, because they are not real data, have the potential to ease data access. Uh, and they also uh, provide uh, greater protections for uh, patient, patient information. Uh, they, uh, because we don't have, uh, depending on how we generate the data, we, we may not have uh, a lot of privacy concerns, uh, access, uh, we have less a hurdle for accessing data. Uh, there are different approaches when it comes to uh, generating synthetic data. Uh, you can use uh, real data to generate uh, synthetic synthetic data. Uh, in this case, we use uh, the real data to build models that capture the distribution and the structure of the real data. Uh, if the model is good, then the synthetic data will have the same statistical properties uh, as the, the real data. Another approach is uh, using, there are two approaches for using, for generating synthetic data without, without real data. Uh, the, in the first one, we can use existing models or uh, background knowledge. Um, in this case, if we're using background knowledge, accuracy of our synthetic data will depend on how good that background knowledge is and how realistic the assumptions uh, that were made were. Um, these uh, types of synthetic data generation are, are, are a bit usual in, in some areas of research where people test if scenarios, what happened if we did this, uh, 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 the last uh, type of uh, synthetic data generation is related to uh, the use of uh, summary statistics. In this case, uh, we use uh, summary statistics that are available in the general population and to uh, to generate to uh, reproduce some probabilistically reproduce uh, to get to probably generate some synthetic data. In this case, there is no risk of identification of personal information because there is no personal information, but we have, it can be quite challenging to have uh, clinical validity with, with this data. And uh, maybe we, we will perceive more the, those difficulties while we go through the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm from the eHealth Research Center and in the eHealth Research Center, people have already uh, worked on generating synthetic data, but in, in different areas. Um, one of our colleagues, Hamid, uh, used historically informed stats uh, 
sensitive data generation for prospective analysis and for simulating the impact of variation in hospital demand and capacity on patient flow metrics. What he was doing was he uh, were, was taking things like if you add a, a bed in ED, what impact it would have on the patient flow, uh, things like that. Um, uh, Philip also worked on generating uh, synthetic brain MRI. Um, the the part of this work I'm presenting is on uh, a software called Cynthia. And uh, our colleague John Grime already started working on Cynthia, adding some family histories to some of the disease modules. I will show how a disease module works in Cynthia. And and also already started Australianizing the uh, Cynthia data uh, by adding some Australian names and time zones. Um, so uh, we use the Cynthia for a synthetic data generation. Um, Cynthia is a, a, a method for for generating fully synthetic data. It assumes that access to real healthcare data is not is not possible and therefore it uses publicly available summary statistics um, uh, the models in Cynthia are are based on clinical workflows and disease and and known disease progressions it's easy to inspect and modify and refine you can it's open source you can look at the code and check what doesn't make sense to you, change it, you can create new disease models. Uh, it includes temporal, model, temporal models that covers the patient and trial life. Uh, it facilitates collaborations, means that, you know, different people can easily collaborate and improve or build a new, uh, a new, new modules because it's, it's open source. So, Cynthia uh, uses uh, demographic data that are freely available, as I said pre previously. To it can use. Uh, we also uh, have uh, disease burdens that can be prevalences of some diseases, uh, information of vaccination, medical visits, and socioeconomic uh, factors. Um, so the the we will be mirroring uh, these information into the, the synthetic into the synthetic data. Yeah. Once a patient have been created, synthetic patient created, they go through their clinical journey in into the disease modules um, that are based on clinical uh, recommendation from from uh, clinicians. They also are based on finding from the literature. And the resulting uh, data can be exported in a standardized format. Um, they can be exported in CSV or FHIR, uh, which is faster healthcare and interoperability resources. There are uh, standardized formats that can be shared across different platforms. So this is... <laughs> How a disease model looks like is a bit complex. I don't know if you can see it very well, but uh, once uh, patients are created, for example, if we say that we want to create 10 patients or 10, uh, 10 100,000 uh, people who reflect uh, the Queensland population, that population will after go through a clinical journey uh, in a disease module, for example, here, if we want to uh, look at uh, ear infections, now uh, the we create a hundred thousand population that will have different uh, probabilities of experiencing ear infection depending on their age, and then those who have uh, an ear infection will have a snowmate code attached to them, to them and then they will have uh, 
so they will experience uh, a, a medical encounter with a, a clinician. Uh, and we see that here, 86% uh, had a prescription for antibiotics, while only 14% had a, a prescription for painkillers. Uh, those who had the uh, prescription for antibiotics also had a prescription for pain painkiller. Uh, so the, the disease module goes on uh, putting in uh, using uh, types of information that are available in in the real population to to continue uh, uh, the the patient journey. Uh, these disease modules are available online. If you check out Sincha, you can look at a disease module and then look how how it works. Some of them are are quite complex. Um, So in our work, uh, we modified uh, the, the Sincha was built on uh, US data. We modified those input data to, to reflect the Australian population. So we added uh, the Australian population by local government area and the distributions by ethnicity, um, age group, education, income, we added Australian postcode time zones and hospital locations because it generates also patients. Uh, it can also generate the patient who went to a specific hospital at specific times. Uh, we added Australian primary health network and urgent care facilities. Uh, we replaced uh, the uh, healthcare insurance data by by Medicare. Um, uh, in in this slide, I'm I'm just showing um, how uh, validation is uh, is is important uh, when you are uh, generating synthetic data. This is based on the earliest version or the first da data set they generated with Cynthia. And we can see here that this is uh, the black line, the black solid line is uh, prevalences of, of uh, type two diabetes that were generated by Cynthia uh, for uh, the Massachusetts population and uh, the one of the dotted line is the US average and the, the second dotted line is the Massachusetts average. We can see that the earliest version of Cynthia had actually created 20% of type two diabetes it, uh, that were in children aged less than three, three years. Uh, we can see here a lot of type two diabetes in children and almost no type two diabetes after the age of 53, 53 years. This is just saying to us that uh, no, uh, uh, they, uh, this was afterwards corrected and the, the prevalences were act, uh, looking uh, much better than that. And I will show later some on uh, Australian data that can be plausible. Uh, this just to show that uh, we have to to check the data and and make sure that they are reflecting reality because sometimes you can have the same prevalence. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the overall population, you can have the same prevalences or the same incidences, but oh, uh, which in the, the underlying population that you created, you have created patients uh, that don't really uh, make sense. Uh, still in this early version of Cynthia, they had uh, a 66 year old male who was pregnant and experienced an abortion, which is uh, not uh, plausible in real life. 
uh, uh, the best uh, data generation uh, techniques for me are the ones that are easy to 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 change, uh, easy to to validate, and um, open source is good because anyone can see what is going on into that into uh, these uh, models. Uh, <clears throat> these are the type of data that Stinja can generate uh, uh, for any given patient. We can generate allergies, care plans, claims. Uh, these are some of these data are still based, are still very US based, but uh, we are trying to modify the input to uh, reflect uh, the Australian population as much as possible. Uh, for uh, a given patient, uh, we can generate some date of birth, uh, even driver's license number, name, foster name, uh, marital status, gender, um, incomes that reflect on, on average, uh, the average, uh, on average, the income of uh, the given population that we have used. Um, uh, we can have uh, observation during a medical encounter and medications when they were started, when they were stopped, and what type of medication it was. So after uh, changing some of the input data from Sincha, we generated 100,000 uh, Queensland uh, uh, people, uh, Queensland population. And uh, we look at uh, the prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, and Alzheimer's disease and, and chronic kidney disease. Um, we can see here that the prevalence, the prevalence of diabetes increased with age. Uh, same for hypertension. Um, Alzheimer's, the prevalence is not increasing after a certain age, but uh, this can still be data that can make sense. Uh, the other things that we can look at here on the right hand side is that uh, for uh, people who experience diabetes, 70% of them had uh, metabolic syndrome at a given time of their life. 63% uh, experience uh, diabetic renal disease, which looks a bit high, but I don't know how plausible that is in, in real life. 51% uh, of diabetes patients had uh, microalbuminuria, which is a protein that is detected in, in, in the urine. Uh, we also I also checked at carefully patients with chronic kidney disease. Uh, Sixty-three percent had um, a prescription for hypertension during a certain point of their life uh, because chronic kidney disease is quite related with um, uh, with hypertension. Uh, it can be one of the complications of hypertension. And Alzheimer's, uh, when we look at Alzheimer's disease, 100% of patients with Alzheimer's disease had a, a de dementia management plan, which uh, makes sense also in real life. So we see that the Sincha method follows expert, expert uh, curated patterns, it generates Realis it can generate realis realistic data without requiring any real data. Uh, it can reduce uh, the burden of administrative requirement for access to data. Uh, it has, uh, Sincha has its own limitations uh, where uh, uh, models can deviate from uh, some populations, because if you use the prevalence of, of some diseases in the US to the Australian populations, that might not reflect how those prevalences of diseases are uh, really in the in Australia. 
so we have another limitation, which is uh, because it's based on disease modules, it can be uh, sometimes the disease module cannot capture the relationship between diseases. Uh, for example, if you have a separate module for hypertension and diabetes, uh, the disease module might not, uh, the generated data might not uh, capture those relationships very well. Um, so we are looking to combine some machine learning or, or other statistical modeling to uh, to the to the Sincha data generation process uh, to for uh, to generate uh, some uh, synthetic data that can uh, that can um, be used for uh, reproducing some models in the real data uh, in uh, using the synthetic data. Thank you, uh, everyone. That, if you have uh, any questions, I'm happy to answer. <laughs>